I've got just a little something to say before we get Marvin and Daniel up. I wanted to just have a few comments on unleashing the divine. When you unleash the divine, you're also surrendering to the divine. You surrender to it, and in that act of surrender, you unleash it. When you stop trying to control everything that cannot be controlled, instead you trust and have faith that a divine force, if you allow it, will take care of whatever situation that you're in perfectly. And that act of trust is also the act of unleashing the divine. Spiritual teacher Eckhart Tolle says to surrender is to say yes to life and see how life starts working for you rather than against you. And author Debbie Ford says, surrender is a gift that you can give yourself. It's an act of faith. It's saying that even though you don't know where the river's flowing, that you trust that it'll take you in the right direction. And one other thing, Reverend Zemke is going to have an announcement right before we are finished with service, so that'll be special. He's got a special announcement. And so now um, we'll get Daniel Harris and Steve Isaac up to do what they do. Wonderful Daniel Namod song called Where the Ocean Goes. Where the Ocean Says to Go. Says to Go. Thank Good intro, by the way. So much pushing and pulling, so much fighting and straining, so much laboring against waves and wind. I am tired, my arms are weary, back is aching, eyes are bleary. I think I'm finally ready to move in. I have struggled, I have cried, I've screamed inside about the kind of life I've tried to lead. Well, right now I think it's time For the very first time To lay down my body and mind And just be If I stop steering my boat Does it sink? Oh no Current carries it along Just so If I stop steering my life I'm gonna be alright I'll just go where the ocean says to go Down the block or to the moon, round the world or just to my room. I can't say where I'm supposed to end up. I've resisted for so long as if I could do no wrong and it's never been quite good enough. It's a funny thing, I guess, a prideful human saying yes without knowing what I'm agreeing to. But there's a simple fact I find The decision's never been mine All I'll ever do is what I'm meant to do If I stop steering my boat Does it sink? Oh no Current carries it along just so If I stop steering my life It's gonna be alright I'll just go where the ocean says to go it's a scary thing for sure to lay down my oars and quit pretending that I've ever been in charge. But it's scarier still to spend my strength and will and never even have a peaceful heart. So here goes the toughest thing, ironic, don't you think? It's so hard and so easy all at once. It's not laziness, it's just the deepest kind of trust That I'm okay when all is said and done Yeah, I'm okay when all is said and done If I stop steering my boat, does it sink? Oh no, current carries it along just so If I stop steering my life, I'm gonna be alright I'll just go where the ocean says to go 
If I stop steering my boat, does it sink? Oh no, current carries it along just so. If I stop steering my life, I'm gonna be all right. I'll just go where the ocean says to go. Well, I'll just go where the ocean says to go. I'll just go where the ocean says to go. Thanks, y'all. What in that? It's got to be me, huh? Testing, testing. Wonderful. Woo! You know, I woke up this morning and I saw sunshine. And I'm like, Hallelujah. You know, <clears throat> Maya Angelou said, isn't this a wonderful day? I've never seen this one before. And, and I thought that this morning. I thought, this is wonderful. I'm glad to be able to come and speak on such a sunny Sunday morning. Wonderful, wonderful. I always like to start my talks off with, um, well, first with a thank you from, from our music team. What a wonderful job they did. Let's give them a big <laughs> hand. But I always like to start a talk off with a little anecdote or a little story. And <clears throat> what came to my mind was about this little girl, a very bright, sunny little girl. One evening after supper, she was sitting in the kitchen watching her mother do the dinner dishes. And she noticed that amongst that auburn hair was some white hairs. And so she asked her mother, Mother, how come you have those white hairs? And the mother said to the daughter, Well, Sometimes when you misbehave, you make me mad, or you cause me worry, I get a new white hair. Well, the little girl thought about this revelation for a while, and then she said, Mommy, how's come Grandma's hair is all white? I got to tell you, I thought that would be a little humor, a little humorous. But last night, when I was speaking to my son, I decided that I would just read my sermon to him. And I got to that point, and he didn't find it humorous at all. <laughs> but I had to remind him, hey, I still have a few dark hairs. You didn't get them all. So, <clears throat> I want to tell you another little story, and this is about a man who's getting ready to make his transition. He's on his deathbed, and he calls his son to him, and he says, son, this is a pocket watch that your grandfather gave to me. I want you to take it down to the jewelry store and I want you to tell them that you want to sell it and see what they'll offer. The son did that and he came back to the father and he says, Father, they offered $150 for this watch. The father said, Son, we'll take it to the pawn shop and see what they'll offer you. Well, he did so, and he came back, and he said, Father, 
They offered me $10. They said it was old and worn. And the father says, well, son, I want you to take it to the museum. So the son does, and he comes back, and he says, Father, the museum curator offered me $500,000 for this watch. They said, what a beautiful representation that would fit in their, their antique collection just wonderfully. And the father said, well, son, the reason why I had you go to all these places is because I don't want you to ever get mad if you find yourself in a place where you're not valued. I want you to remember to be around people that value you, that support you, that love you. And if you find yourself not in that place, change. You know, I, th I thought, well, this is all good and well, Spirit, but what else am I going to give in my talk? And, you know, when, when you ask Spirit, and the way Spirit works with me is, I ask, and Spirit generally replies. It's generally the first thing on my mind the next morning. And so, the next morning... Spirit said, this is what I want you to talk about. And I'm like, oh. So, <clears throat> today, part of my talk is about the Bible. A certain book in the Bible. This, this book is in between Judges and 1 Samuel. The book is Ruth. And as I perused Ruth, of course, every, how many people know the story of Ruth? Yeah, quite a few. Well, I'm going to tell it a little bit differently today because everybody knows that Ruth, she would only stay with Naomi. She would leave her land and go to Naomi's land and find love and happiness and live happily ever after. Isn't that the story? And she was also part of the lineage of David. So <clears throat> when I thought about that, I thought, well, there's a lot more to this story than that. You know, the story starts off in fam famine. And metaphysically, when I think about famine, I think about poor consciousness, poor mind consciousness. I'm thinking that I don't have the answers in my life. But for Naomi... She had followed her husband out from the land that they lived and went to Moab in order to be in a more prosperous land, a land that wasn't in famine. And as time passed, her husband passed away, and then her two sons passed away, and Naomi found herself in lack again. No, no support. She had two daughter-in-laws. And, you know, back in that time, that wasn't really a good place for a woman to be. And so I take all that into consciousness, and I say, what does that mean to me? Well, that means that sometimes we can move in consciousness in places that don't really serve our hearts and best good. And we need to think about where we're at, choices we've made, and decisions that we've formed, and actions that we've taken. But Naomi was at a place where she knew her next step. Her next step was to go home, to her homeland, to her relatives, to where she knew she was going to be taken care of. Because she would have that support once again in her life. So she tried to convince her two daughter-in-laws to go back to their own families. And one chose to do it, and Ruth chose to go with Naomi, to support Naomi. 
and to take that walk with her into the unknown because Ruth certainly didn't know where she was going, only that it was a different land. When she got there, she worked in the fields to support her and Naomi. And um, as the story unfolded, Boaz kind of liked her, and he owned the fields. And, of course, you know the rest of the story. And uh, in her life, because she followed her intuition, followed her gut, followed her heart, you know, had the faith to move into a new arena, something totally unknown. Her life became much, much better. And I know that um, everybody from one time or another in their life have had life-changing decisions that they had to make. And just having that feeling of uncertainty, but that faith to move forward in life sometimes is just the most wonderful thing. I've been working with a young man who is caught up in fear. And he's so entangled in fear that he can't move forward. Yet he calls me all the time. And all the time I continue to deliver the same message, have faith, trust in God. Take some really good advice. And one of the things that Myrtle Fillmore said that I've been sharing with this young man is, and Myrtle Fillmore is the Unity co-founder, and she brought a practical yet compassionate approach to life's challenges, during which she encouraged those who sought her counsel to rely on their own spiritual capacities to empower themselves. She said, quote, get busy using the truth you know, she wrote. Bring forth your own joyous world of love, friendship, beauty, and plenty. Within, there is within you the intelligence to build such a world. And yet I share this with this young man. There is within you that potential. There is within you that intelligence to be able to move out of that fear. A positive mind finds opportunities in everything. A negative negative mind finds fault in everything. You know, there was times in my life when things weren't positive. I have now 37 years of continuous sobriety. That didn't happen. Thank you. That didn't happen because I stayed in a negative attitude. That didn't happen because I stayed around a negative place in my life. That happened because I was willing to change, to move beyond the circumstances that had embraced me, that I had allowed to happen. You know, and the same thing I tell this young man, you know, I know that potential is in you to succeed. I know that life has an abundant beauty just waiting for you to say yes. Just waiting for you to say yes. There was a... Albert Einstein said that this is how he meets a challenge. He said, if I were given one hour to save the planet, I would spend 59 minutes 
defining the problem and one minute resolving it. While that may sound extreme, it does highlight the importance of defining problems. It also hints at some interesting facts. A well-defined problem also contains its own solution, and generally that solution is obvious and straightforward. Marie Far Farleo is an American life coach, a motivated speaker, and an author. Her company focuses on small businesses and personal development training for entrepreneurs. She wrote, success does not come from what you do occasionally. Success comes from what you do consistently. And when I thought about that, I thought, yep, that's said in another way. My dad used to say it to me all the time. Marvin, practice makes perfect. You know, so to recap, we must overcome the obstacles that block our divine flow, that short out our life forces. So here's some suggestions. Seek to understand what is presented to you and use your own discernment. Develop a good self-worth about oneself. Be surrounded by people who value your worth. Do not compare your circumstances to others. Well-defined problems generally have obvious solutions. Rely on your own spiritual capacity to develop and unfold. Follow your own heart and your intuitive instincts. Don't be afraid to use your gifts that God gave you. Do not be afraid to ask for help when you need it. Success does come from what you do consistently. So I invite you to sit quietly with spirit often. That way, you will have that opportunity to unleash the divine within you. Thank you. God bless you. Now. Thank you, Reverend Marvin. Inspirational indeed. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to all. I want to say that I appreciate all the wonderful prayer support that happened for me as I made a wonderful journey to my home state in Wisconsin two weeks ago. Uh, beautiful weather, exquisitely garden fresh vegetables, and the welcome arms of family renewed and inspired me, and it's good to be home. I want to talk today, I have three things I want to speak to. Number one, briefly, as all of you know, we still have our food barrel in our lobby from the St. Pete Free Clinic. I drove by the clinic uh, yesterday, early in the afternoon, uh, here in St. Petersburg, to see a line of about 30 cars lined up to receive food. And that's just in the middle of our city. It's still going on in our county. It's going on in Tampa. So I want to thank all of you that have consistently brought food here to the church for the barrel. Please continue to do that. And if you would prefer to offer a donation, to the St. Pete Free Clinic, uh, you can make out a check to the church and we will in turn send it to them. Um, it's a joy to see that happen and I do want to thank all of you who have felt that spirit of generosity. Second, um, I do want you to notice as the announcement in the bulletin today mentions there is a retreat going to be held here first Saturday in March from the Course in Miracles people. 
an all-day event. The announcement is clear, and you do need to sign up in the bookstore. How many of you have noticed the living legacy tree in the lobby? I want to tell you a little about the background of this. This is the culmination of a very long-held vision that actually began for me some 10 years ago. During a very deep meditation that I had during a seminar that was being held here at the church, I had an experience in which I saw this magnificent living tree. The roots of it extended deep, deep into the earth. The trunk was majestic, strong, vital, and its branches went out into the universe. The tree was filled with light and it constantly was renewing itself. It was alive in every sense of the term. Lifting its head, its branches to the sun, to the source of all life. That image lingered in my consciousness for a very long time. As I mentioned 10 years ago, I sought to find an external representation of it around me in the world. I went to dozens of museums, and I went as I traveled across the country to different buildings that I heard about images of this nature that I could see. I actually, about six years ago, saw it in a smaller, different kind of representation in my own home state, about 50 miles from where my family lives. Now, our family, the Zemke family, has helped to create the image itself, which you see represented on the wall. It is given to the ministry as a way to inspire all of us today for the future. There is a brochure that has been prepared and will be available within about a week or so that will tell you how you can participate to help make the dream of this vision of the church unfold because it is about the future of our ministry. As all of you know, it's a wonderful time in my own life to be at this wonderful age of 82 looking forward. When I was at home, I got to look backward a bit over what used to be and where the changes of life have been. But now I'm looking forward to more of what will be as we plan for the future. More detail will be given in the days to come, months to come, and year to come. In addition, I want to thank all of the people who helped in any way to help make it a reality. God bless you. Well, all right. I hope this song sends you out into the world with a hope in your heart and uh, the decision for love. So uh, as we sing these uh, words, as I sing these words, sing them in your head, make it your personal mantra for the week. Every morning you have the decision to choose love. Love is my decision. It's up to me to give up my heart Love is my decision No one else can tell me to start And once I decide to change my mind God will show me how Love is my decision My decision right here and now I 
see you nodding Love is my decision It's up to me to stand on that bridge Love is my decision No one else can make me forgive And once I decide to change my mind God will show me how Love is my decision It's my decision right here and now It's up to me to dance down that road Love is my decision No one else can lighten my load And once I decide to change my mind God will show My decision right here and now Love is my decision It's up to me to dance down that road Love is my decision No one else can lighten decision right here and now happy sunday everyone we'll see you next week